And uh, so applying uh, this technique uh, to elliptic and hyperbolic orbitals using the universal branching constructed by Seidel, uh, we computed the two zero absolute potential W and showed that the fountain derives an uh, and uh, so, for instance, uh, this uh, shows an, a picture of elliptic orbital P1236. Uh, so this is elliptic curve function by Z6. And uh, so this is the universal cover of, uh, of P1236. And there are various polygons bounded by the side of Lagrangian. And uh, if you count them all, then you will get a uh, portion of forms. So notice that only when we record all the high order terms, uh, we can, we can uh, get the portion of forms. If you just uh, uh, include the leading order term, still you get the same form, but you, you cannot see this modularity uh, directly. Okay, so this is a brief review uh, of uh, 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 the past works, and this comes to our uh, 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 main topic about commutative uh, neural construction. So to begin with, uh, let me review uh, on a very important example of non commutative theories uh, constructed by uh, the root example and Ornall. Uh, so uh, to begin with, uh, let's look at this very simple example of uh, P2 mirror. So P2 is mirror to this superpotential Z plus W plus 1 over ZW. And uh, uh, so we look at A side, the entire side repeatedly uh, on this superpotential, and look at B side uh, on the projected space P2. And then the entire side repeatedly, uh, indeed this time it is generated by L0, L1, and L2 uh, drawn here. Uh, so so these are the uh, left stress symbols, and the boundary are the vanishing cycles, uh, which is more than to draw here, so instead I'm just drawing as the boundary. And then, uh, so these are L0, L1, and L2, and on the other side we have O, O1, and O2, and then uh, by identifying these objects, then you get uh, the logical mirror symmetry, uh, in this case, and it's been studied by our side, and uh, also found in true Mazars will use a different approach. And then, uh, so the non-commutative mirrors is by a non-exact symplectic deformation of this uh, higher sinus category. So uh, essentially, it is like compactifying this uh, this uh, functional elliptic curve in some non-exact way, uh, and then uh, that will lead to non-commutative deformation of this uh, P2, uh, non-commutative uh, uh, P2. And so this is uh, this A denotes uh, this is Hot's Lyapunov algebra studied by uh, various uh, algebra uh, 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 specialists <coughs> and uh, it is not really the information of P2 meaning that the derived category is the same uh, but uh, in, uh, well, not quite the same, it is deformed from the uh, derived category of the P2 so it is deformation yeah. uh, so we have this example uh, more community deformation of P2 and on the other hand, uh, more recently, uh, so Bockland constructs uh, more commutative uh, uh, Pinsberg models uh, of functional Riemann surface. Uh, it, it is basically taking timers on this uh, functional Riemann surface, so with vertices and the punctures, and then you take the dual timer, and from that you hook up the non commutative and Pinsberg model. So this example shows that uh, non commutative uh, geometry is useful to encode uh, the mirror geometry. So, the uh, function serves as mirrors in their significant works. And uh, we are developing a mirror construction which naturally produces non commutative geometries. And our construction naturally comes with an injective functor from the Foucault category to the mirror category of twisted bundles. So, basically, vision specializations uh, here. And then uh, also, uh, this construction uh, gives an interesting uh, application to construct explicit deformation quantizations, which is also Topic uh, talks by uh, Mr. Soiberman. Okay, so the key point uh, is here. So we consider a finite collect collection of unobstructed Lagrangian submanifolds, uh, roughly drawn here. So a finite collection, and let's denote this finite collection by this old L. And if we just consider its union, then let's not denote it by L. So roughly, uh, so the Lagrangian four theory is about this union. So let's, uh, for, for, uh, for the moment, just take the union. And then we take the infinitesimal uh, deformation space, which is recorded by the odd degree uh, uh, floor theory uh, of, of uh, 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 each pair of Lagrangian. And so we just take this vector space and consider uh, the linear combination of that. So, so this is an element in the vector space. So odd degree, uh, so this picture draws an example of odd degree deformation. 
Uh, so in, in contrast to SYZ, uh, SYZ consider a deformation of core, right? So we consider deformation uh, of this collection of Lagrangian uh, inversion. And then, uh, roughly speaking, uh, the Welch Street uh, superpotential W is defined by counting this with outputs with output, uh, at one of the branch uh, of the branch. So, roughly speaking, this is the Welch Street superpotential. So, n beta is the counting, is the number of homomorphic disks. Q beta is the area, recording the area of the homomorphic disk. And X beta is recording the corner uh, of the polygon. So for instance, if it is some picture like this, then you get this monomial, this one of the spine. Yeah. And then the problem is that, well, W naively, it is very simple, but indeed it is not well defined because it depends on the position of the marked point. So if you move this marked point around, then you are not counting this point, no longer counting this polygon, but you count another polygon. And so this is not really invariant under this change of uh, position of marked point. So this requires the notion uh, of weakly unobstructedness uh, defined by Mutaya O, Uta, and Ono. So uh, you consider this uh, somehow exponential uh, of the infinitesimal deformation. So this is M0B, somehow like exponential map. And then this gives a chain, uh, even degree chain, uh, between L and F to itself. And then uh, the requirements of weakly unobstructedness uh, is that uh, M0B has to be proportional to the fundamental class, uh, the unit uh, of L. And this gives a superpotential WB. So this equation exactly means that uh, when you change the position of the mark point, then the superpotential is still well defined. So it, it changes in a nice way. And then uh, this gives uh, a uh, things for follow x check W. And uh, it was uh, used uh, in the Pyrobot and Ono uh, in their works on constructing the era of compact foreign medicals, and also uh, used by us to construct the era of the elliptic and hyperboric orbitals. So, this is the toy picture, and this is the elliptic and hyperboric orbital picture. Now, the main trouble is that, uh, well, if if we use the weakly unobstructed with equation, in general, it could have no solution, the no non-zero solution. So generically, in, in many cases, generically, you don't have a non-zero solution. So for instance, uh, you consider the uh, inverse Lagrangian constructed by Seidel. So this is, uh, so you imagine that this is a plane com compacted by at infinity. So indeed, it is P1. I'm drawing P1 and Seidel Lagrangian over this, uh, in this P1 and you take away three punctures. Now, you try to count holomorphic disks, so you fix a mark point and consider uh, holomorphic disks uh, passing through this mark point. Now, you see that if you, the mark point is here, then you count this uh, C, Y, X with area A. And if you move the mark point to somewhere else, to outside here, let's say, and then you get this outer disk, which has another area, B. So you get the term x, y, z, but with q to the power b. And in general, of course, they are not equal. A, there is no reason to believe a equals to b, unless you set them to equal. Unless in some special instance, uh, they are equal, but in generically they are not equal. And then the, then the trouble comes up. When area are not equal, then these two does not agree. So w is not well defined. So this is not really a uh, weakly structure. So in generic case, uh, indeed, weakly unobstructedness cannot be achieved. And from this example, an insight is that if you record the order of the corner that the polygon pass through, so this is CYX and XYZ, if instead you regard them as non-commutative variable instead of commutative variable, then indeed there is a way uh, to, to so, so there is a relation that you can hook up to match them, match these two. So just uh, x, y equals to some factor times uh, y, x. Then you can mesh these two. So this is uh, why non-commutative geometry comes up. So the solution is to use non-commutative deformations instead of using commutative variables. So, uh, so uh, the solution is the following. So instead of considering commutative variable, you consider uh, a quicker Q forms from the odd degree uh, bosons of L, I, and L, uh, to L, J. So we call that these are the deformations, odd degree deformations uh, of L. And instead of uh, just using the vector space V, we now record it using the quiver Q, and indeed it's part algebra. 
So consider the path algebra Q instead of uh, uh, just considering the commutative vector space B. So it is a commutative version of the uh, deformation B. And this recalls the source and half of each variable and also the order of variables in each one of you. So you record more information. And similarly, you consider this uh, linear combination uh, of deformation. So here, xA are both degree morphisms. So you consider their linear combination. And again, you consider more of the time equation, but this time because you have several fundamental paths. So you separate out the fundamental classes to get several superpotential that you want to get uh, that you add. And because you are reporting the order of the variables, indeed you can simply take the sum of these uh, uh, superpotential. And, and this will not lose any information because, because the source and target of the errors are already reported by the quicker. So this does not lose any, any information. And then, so in this way, you form a non commutative uh, algebra, which is different <coughs> relations. So you just take the path algebra of this quiver, portion out these weakly unobstructed relations. So from this equation, you get weakly uh, relations uh, of uh, recording weakly unobstructedness. And so you portion out this relation R, and you get a non commutative uh, uh, algebra, quiver algebra. And W is defined, uh, is, is an element in this one. So this is uh, the non-commutative that of things to follow that we uh, Instead of considering commutative deformation, we consider non-commutative deformation. Right. And then, so let's uh, go back to this uh, very simple example, side of the function. And now, uh, we are using this relation. QAYX is equivalent to QBXY. And then, under this relation, this is non-commutative relation. YX is not equal to XY. But under this relation, these two potentials get identified. So this is the solution, very simple solution. And then uh, in this case, it, the quiver is very simple. It just consists of one vertex because there's only one Lagrangian branch here. And then uh, we have three arrows corresponding to these uh, three and more sums of the Lagrangian inversion. And then the path algebra is just the three algebra generated by x, y, z, the, the path algebra. And then we portion out these beauty and obstructed relations. There are three. So, so looking at each output, so at z vertex, at z vertex, if you consider uh, the uh, uh, the m0b, consider the m0b output at z vertex, then there is x y and y x. So this is how the relation comes out. So this is relation coming from the m0b. So output at z. So this w is central. Ah, uh, sorry, w this is w is central element of the problem. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, this is yeah, this is an important point that I will also. Right expectation. Yeah. And then, um, uh, so uh, using these relations, then W uh, is well defined. So you have several expressions, but they are all equivalent to these relations. And uh, let's compare with uh, the DG uh, differential graded space uh, of Konsevich and Sorbet. Uh, so, indeed, so, so, uh, so this is uh, a, a part of their construction. So they consider uh, this uh, differential graded space uh, forms from the uh, 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 a infinity algebra, so from the M, M, K, uh, M, A infinity operator MK, they hook up a differential graded algebra, and this could be considered to be a universal deformation space, so this is the fixed space here. And then, uh, well, in our case, the infinite algebra is the Lagrangian flow theory. And then now we take the odd degree deformations, so, and also we only consider uh, the weakly unobstructed deformations. So the reason is that well, these countings are easier to handle, because if you only take the odd degree deformations, then constant disk contribution are, are gone in many cases. So it's easier to just take the odd degree deformations, and it's more possible. And also we only take the weakly unobstructed deformations, so let's say this is the subspace of weakly and obstructed all degree deformations. So this is a subspace in the DG space. And then uh, we have a uh, superpotential W. W is only well defined on this subspace, not defined on the whole DG space, but defined on this subspace. And then uh, we consider the zero of this superpotential, and this gives a singularity in general. And this singularity is the, uh, is the uh, 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 era uh, of our uh, uh, the space that we start with. And so in, as a result, we obtain a non commutative and a this So this is a comparison. Okay. And then, uh, so, uh, yeah, as uh, 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 Professor Konsevich mentioned, so it is always a central element. It follows from the A-infinity relation and also the weakly and obstructed uh, uh, requirement. 
So uh, it means that it commutes with every variable in this uh, figure with relations. So uh, it is the so a infinity relations can be written as BG algebra. So this is uh, m squared equals to zero. And then, uh, well, you just spell out this relation, so it just means uh, m b b b b m zero b b b b b b equals to zero. So it's just algebraic uh, uh, calculation. And m zero b by weakly and obstructed relations, it just it is just w times one, uh, the fundamental class. And then, well, because of the property of m, so so of the unit, uh, because of the property of the unit, so indeed, well, there are only two possibilities. So uh, here is m two in it, m two b with w one and m two w one b. So because of uh, the property of the unit, only m two shows up, and uh, and then uh, because of the property of the unit, then it becomes uh, b is a linear combination of x a x a, and so it becomes something like w times x a and x a times w. And uh, because the whole thing has to be zero, and they are linear really independent, each term is zero, and so this proves uh, why. Uh,
so uh, the thing is, uh, so on the next slide, uh, what, I, what I want to say is that I want to justify uh, why non-commutative uh, uh, mirror is useful. Uh, so it fits well uh, for the purpose of mirror symmetry uh, that uh, <coughs> so synthetic geometry of X is transformed to algebraic geometry uh, of this uh, 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 non-commutative uh, non and non squared model. And uh, the quantum homology uh, well, can still be uh, uh, obtained from the deformation of this non-commutative mirror, so it fits well into the program of mirror symmetry. So even though this is non-commutative, so it's still useful to capture the synthetic geometry of X. And also, uh, indeed, uh, this is more linear rather than the uh, conventional mirror Y, which is commutative. So this is commutative, but usually this is quite non-linear, and indeed, uh, in many cases, we also take uh, like uh, the exceptional collection of this commutative geometry to get back to this pure algebra, uh, perhaps with potential and so on, to capture the geometry. So indeed, this is more linear and also easier to work with. And, uh, and also, it is unavo unavoidable to uh, encounter non commutative mira if we consider, uh, just like in uh, the work of the rule, uh, for example, Orlov, uh, we, co we consider the uh, 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 more exact deformation of the Kuiper category of X, then it is uh, in, in unavoidable to, <laughs> to have a non commutative mirror. So, uh, this is uh, how I justify why a non commutative mirror is useful. Uh, well, in order to go back to the commutative geometry, then we need to consider uh, the, the, as uh, uh, Professor Konsevich said, we need to consider the uh, Mojar space of uh, 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 modules uh, of the quiver algebra, and then to put up uh, state stability on that on that uh, for those modules to put up this commutative geometry. But this is uh, this is uh, the future direction, which is which I'm not going to talk about. Yeah. And then uh, it always uh, exists a mirror counter. So this is a very natural mirror counter from the Foucault category of X to the category of matrix factorization uh, of this uh, non commutative and non transfer model AW. And then, uh, so given a Lagrangian, what you consider is uh, the M1 of uh, LB, L deformed by B with W. So the picture is the following. So you have U here, and you have different, uh, so you start with uh, several Lagrangian L here, and then you consider uh, uh, counting strips bounded by L and U, and it naturally gives a matrix factorization here. So indeed, the, uh, well, intuitively, it is very simple. So W is counting polygon, so W is a counting of polygon. And then, uh, so for instance, in this case, you have uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. So in this very simple case, let's say you have this polygon appearing in the superpotential W. And then the matrix factorization is very simple. It is just dividing this polygon into two pieces. So you have a very simple matrix factorization, x1, x2, and then x3, x4, x5. So this is the idea. Uh, by indeed, uh, in the commutative case, it was uh, the, uh, uh, the argument of the Kaya Ono and Ono why matrix factorization actually come up uh, in, in, uh, in the study of Lagrangian broad theory. And uh, we extend, naturally extend their work, uh, to their arguments to this non commutative situation to hook up non commutative matrix factorization out of uh, Lagrangian. So we have a natural counter on that. <laughs> 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 Okay, and this functor, this very natural functor, has also also has a nice property uh, that um, that uh, it is injective. This functor is injective in more some, in more some level. So this functor, indeed, uh, if you consider the functor uh, induced on the more some space. So we have induced a, a counter on the Watson space on Watson Watson level. And the injectivity is saying that this is injected. So this this Morton's base level counter is injective. 
And indeed, uh, so to prove uh, the injectivity, so we, we, what we need to do is build a right inverse to this map. So, so this is the induced counter, and we want to build a, a, a right inverse out of that. Sorry, is this L is your collection of other stuff? Yes, 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 exactly. So this yeah, exactly. So L is what we start with, and U is, uh, is the Lagrangian. Yeah, is the Lagrangian we are transforming, and so we, we send U to a matrix factorization. So these are the image of. Uh, so these are the image matrix factorizations corresponding to L and U, and I want to say that uh, this uh, direction is injective. This counter is injective. So what I need to do is to build a right inverse uh, to this counter. And this is uh, what I call psi. So I want to define this psi. And the definition is very uh, natural. So let's say we have an element uh, in, in here. Let's call it phi. And what we do is the following. So we call that this matrix factorization L is just the Lagrangian flaw theory between L and itself. So this is just the flaw theory of L deformed by B with itself. So there is a very natural element here in, in, in this flaw theory is the unit. One is the unit. So you just take the unit and send it back to here. So the, the definition of this psi is that you consider evaluation of this phi, phi is a homomorphism, evaluate it on this unit one and send it to F U. So you evaluate on so on, on the fundamental class. And then uh, you get an element here, but an element here is again just a flaw theory. So this is just flaw cohomology between uh, L, B with, uh, with U. So you send to an element here, and now you want to get back to an element here. So from, so this, let's, let's also write it as home, home L, B with U. So you want to get back an element here, and very simple, it's you just take b equals to zero. So you restrict to b equals to zero, so you get an element here. So this is a very natural definition uh, of this uh, right inverse. And you can, it is a logic game to check that it is uh, really a chain map. So this is a chain map. And also, uh, indeed, it defines a right inverse. Uh, so let me just write one sentence, because uh, the sign is not working. So let me just write uh, the most important sentence to say that it is a right inverse. So indeed, uh, it is just a logic game to check this composed with this is by definition is the M2P of the fundamental class with the point uh, uh, with with n. So P is an element. Uh, P is an element uh, in uh, in uh, the left, in the left. Yeah, in the left. So P is an element in the left. And then so you, it, it is a logic game to check that it is just M2P of uh, the fundamental class with this P with, uh, with P and this is. This is the unit, and so this is just. So this is the most important sentence to conclude that this is the right unit. Okay, and then uh, and then uh, also I want to mention that uh, it is important. Uh, it, it has an uh, interesting application to deformation colonization. That uh, uh, well, well, in many cases uh, in mirror symmetry, this is. Uh, equivalence to a commutative geometry. So A could be commutative, uh, uh, equivalence to a commutative geometry. So you can replace A by Y, by a uh, commutative variety, alpha variety Y, uh, with a potential here. And then, uh, then uh, now you can deform this uh, L. Uh, you can deform this set of the function that we, that we start with. Uh, deform this. And then this would give a family of deformation, AT, which can be regarded as deformation quantization of Y. And WT certainly also change. So the interesting point here is that uh, we are not even deforming the symplectic structure on X. So we are fixing the symplectic structure on X. So indeed, these two are supposedly to be equivalent. YW and ATWT is equivalent. But even their equivalent, AT could be different from Y. So this is the main observation. So the thing is that, uh, well, in usual, uh, in, uh, to cook up on commutative geometry, usually we want to deform the symbolic structure of X so that the mirror geometry also have, uh, uh, have uh, 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 a direction of non commutative deformation. But here, what we are doing is different. We are not deforming the symbolic structure of X, but we are deforming the branch. Uh, the Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I need to
Okay, and then uh, also we can write down the uh, deformed superpotential. This is non commutative superpotential, so what, this is y, x, y, z is different from z, x, y, and so on. So we can write down the full potential also very explicitly in terms of the behavior of the data functions. And, uh, well, as a consequence of the general theory, this is the central element of this algebra. But indeed, it is difficult to check directly if you really are computed in this graph, so it's very difficult on the theory game to check that they are really uh, central elements. And so we get on a little mirror uh, of this uh, uh, orbit. orbit, orbit. Yeah. And then, uh, so now uh, you consider, uh, so the original mirror, commutative mirror, can be considered to be C, X, Y, Z, the polynomial algebra portion by W, which is the alpha dimensional surface, uh, this alpha dimensional surface, and then, uh, well, deformation quantization was, uh, well, contributed largely from Konsevich. So uh, to prove that uh, there always exists a deformation quantization associated to every Prochamp structure of the manifold. So this is, in particular, a, uh, so you consider the Prochamp structure uh, on here, and that will give rise to deformation quantization. And so here we have already explicit deformation quantization of this half-time diapersal surface, and they are also studied by adding of Innsberg algebraically on commutative diapersal surface. And indeed, uh, this non-commutative deformation, it corresponds to this uh, very explicit Prochamp structure. So we have a global family of non-commutative algebras written explicitly in terms of data functions. So this is a global family in the curve. Okay, so this is uh, one example. And another one uh, is uh, just another type uh, for tangent diagram, E4 tilde, the PO case. Uh, but I want to mention it because uh, uh, it is a recent work by uh, Helen Hero Kirk that uh, it has interest link uh, with plot and gauge theory. That uh, indeed the PO case is the Mojai space of traces flat connections uh, over the sphere. And then, uh, well, we consider flat connections which extend inside and flat connections which extend outside, away from the knot. Then you get two Lagrangians inside uh, the Piro case. So L1, L2 are Lagrangians inside the Piro case. And the flow theory of these two Lagrangians by a TFO conjecture should be uh, equivalent to instant long flow for homology. So this uh, has nice uh, applications to knot theory. So this is why I also want to mention the Piro case. It is another type of thing that uh, uh, so like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is yeah. 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 Okay, uh, so let's uh, hook up the mirror uh, of the bureau case. So uh, I just draw the bureau case in, uh, like this, and then we choose two distinguished Lagrangian which generate the category. So fix mm -hmm. these two Lagrangian. Mm -hmm. Now let's say again, just make it to be symmetric about the equator, to be simple. So it corresponds to this, this quiver, so there are two vertices because we, are, we have two Lagrangians and we have four endomorphisms, so we have four arrows. And then we consider output at W, let's say, let's say we consider output of M0B at W. So there are roughly two terms at least, so ZYX and XYZ. Because it is symmetric, so it just turns out. So this is just zero, so it is really, again, and, ah, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, the, the main point is that because we are considering quiver algebra, so you, uh, these two are not the same element. So this is just a relation. Right? So this, because these are non commutative variables, so I'm not, I'm not saying that these two are equal. These are weakly unobstructed relations, and we are positioning out these uh, weakly unobstructed relations, so we get a quiver algebra with relations. And then again, we have a superpotential by counting uh, holomorphic uh, polygons uh, uh, output at a generic point. So, for instance, you have x y x y and so on. So, you can read off all the polygons here. I'm not going to uh, uh, spell it out. And then you can again write it very explicitly in terms of data function. So, it is again a, some global module form. And uh, indeed, more writing was uh, with the joint work uh, with the actual. Okay. And then, uh, so what's the relation with commutative geometry? It turns out that uh, in this case, there is a very direct relation. You just consider the conical, so you, and then this is the conical resolution. So this is the conical, and you consider the fragment resolution of the conical, you get this y. And then, uh, and then the conical equation is in this way, is x1, x3 equals to x2, x4. 
And now you consider uh, an exceptional collection of this uh, polyphone grip resolved polyphone. So you have O1 and O, and then you get back the same quicker. And then these relations follow easily from the commutative case because uh, these are now commutative variable. And so zyx of course equals to x1 z because they are commutative variable. And notice that it, is, it does not make sense to talk about xy equals to yx because xy is an enormous sum of oy and yx is an enormous sum of oy and y1. So, so we can only talk about these relations instead of xy equals to yx in this quicker uh, 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 and so, uh, and, and indeed explicitly, there are relations between these variables and these uh, 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 sections uh, or bundles. And then uh, uh, from this, you arrive again at the same non commutative resolution, uh, 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 sorry, same algebra. So it can be regarded as non commutative resolution of the polyphone. So you have like this relation, and it was studied by Bono, Orlov, and Espinor, and perhaps like other physicists. And then, um, and then so uh, what we have is that the elliptic orbital is mirror to originally a non-commutative algebra A with superpotential, but we can move it to this commutative thing now. We can just pretend that it is defined on this polyphone resolution now. And so this is a this gives a commutative mirror for the orbital orbital. And uh, it is compatible to the result of a side or good effing of example and follow, uh, in the sense that uh, they consider mirror of uh, P1 minus four points and get this mirror, and you see that this is just a deformation of this mirror, because we have orbital point we have more disks to contribute, so this is the deformation of that. So it is compatible to the result. Okay, now again, you can consider on community deformation. So it is just the same story, so I'm not going to uh, say it in detail. So you just deform the Lagrangian again, and then uh, you, so the weekly and absorptive relations get deformed, and then you have this non community deformation, and this gives a global family of non community deformation of the resolved conical. So A U can be regarded as deformation of the resolved conical. And uh, so, of the, uh, uh, so this is alpha, and, and then you quotient by W. So this is also a, a deformation of the affine diversal surface of type E or Q. So, so this is the same story uh, as uh, the P1 to the So this gives application to the deformation organization. Okay, and then uh, the last uh, uh, geometry that I want to mention is the Carpian three folds associated to the SL2 heat system. So, uh, well, they, they were constructed by Diagonescu, uh, uh, Donaghi, and Pentev, and also uh, by Smith uh, uh, by considering modification at the point. So, uh, the Clavial geometry, roughly speaking, uh, it is a conic vibration uh, over, over this curve. So, this is a conic vibration over the curve. The curve is parameterized by x. And uh, the quadratic differential is coming uh, from the, the tensor product of iron, of iron 1 forms of the Higgs field. So uh, I'm not going into this story because anyway, I'm just interested in this Clavier geometry. So this Clavier geometry comes from uh, Higgs field. Yeah. And then so this is the quadratic differential E, and this gives a conic vibration. So the conic vibration is drawn here, which was constructed by uh, the theory to this paper. And in this story, special Lagrangian metric spheres are the DPS states studied by uh, Alcohol and Nice B. And uh, the, uh, the interesting point is that uh, the DPS states undergo wall crossing and uh, they obey conservation of the amount of wall crossing corner. So it is uh, uh, the most interesting point here. And uh, well, and Christian Smith is deduced the wall crossing uh, by studying the unit conditions. So they embed uh, the Dirac category of Hinsworth algebra to the higher category and identify quadratic differentials uh, with the unit conditions on the uh, Dirac category. So, so and then and then the stability module has cluster structures studied by Angela. Uh, so there are uh, uh, so there is a lot of uh, lot of story here. So uh, well, what I want to say is that uh, our theory well, can be applied to this situation to give a functor. So this is the, the point that we are interested in, the functor itself. So this functor uh, 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 is from the Foucault category to the derived category of the Newton's algebra, uh, which indeed is the right inverse part of the Smith and Bennett. So uh, our theory of uh, produce the functor, uh, which is also useful, uh, which is useful to study robots and so on. This is the point I want to mention. 
Uh, so, uh, so this is a uh, picture of a WKB collection of Lagrangian spheres. Uh, so some of you are very familiar with these uh, uh, stuff. So, uh, so the quadratic differential induces a triangulation on the curve. Uh, so the triangulation is drawn here. <coughs> well, perhaps it's not very clear. Uh, <laughs> roughly it is drawn here. Right? The picture is drawn here. And then, um, and then uh, vertices, uh, so, so the vertices of the triangulation is uh, poles uh, of the projective dimension which is described set And then uh, from the triangulation, we construct a basis of Lagrangian spheres called WKB collection. So uh, basically, they are, uh, they are uh, corresponds to matching paths between zeros, which are, the matching paths are due to uh, uh, to this uh, to this figure, so it is still graph uh, uh, of, of basically the, uh, the, the figure constructed from the triangulation. Yeah. And then uh, now we apply our construction. So uh, we have a basis of the Lagrangian sphere. So let's uh, again get a quiver from that. And indeed, this quiver this time it is a diamond. So it is a bipartite bar graph uh, in the in the base curve C. So this is the quiver here. So vertices of this quiver corresponds to the Lagrangians and arrows corresponds to uh, the V1 morphisms. So we get a quiver, which is indeed a timer. And then, uh, indeed, in diamond theory, so it is natural to take the dual timer. And by taking the dual timer, well, I'm not going into detail, but you can get six second branches made from dual timer in the spectral curve. So the spectral curve is also drawn here, but it is not, it is not very obvious. So it is a double cover. So this, this is the curve, base curve C, and the spectral curve is a 2 to 1 cover uh, to here and uh, ramified at the back points zeros. And, uh, and uh, well, there are, so these are the branch points and, and, and so on. And the zigzag Lagrangian so the, are the red circles. So the red circles are indeed living in the spectral curve. So that's why sometimes it is in dotted lines, meaning that it is in another level of the cover. So it is 2 to 1 cover. So Sometimes it stays in one, le one level and sometimes it stays in another uh, 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 level of the uh, cover. Yeah. So these are the zigzag branches, and as you see, it is just the formation of the straight line uh, uh, connecting the two zeros. So, so indeed, uh, zigzag branches circles are just the same as uh, the this WKB connection. Okay, now uh, then the next, next step is to study the unobstructed relations. So, well, in this case, the low shift superpotential is just zero because n zero b has to be degree two, and in this case, we take degree one de uh, degree one uh, uh, deformations, and if you take degree one deformations, n zero b has degree two, but for the Menon class has degree zero. So, if in Calabi's case, uh, so w equals to zero by the reason, so we do not have to worry about the low shift superpotential. On the other hand, there is something called space-time superpotential, which is very important. So it, it, it is hooked up from these uh, unobstructed relations. So you consider coefficients of m zero b at z. So let's say this is z, and more precisely z bar. So the degree two term, degree two uh, in the mod sum. And so you have uh, well uh, the leading order term are easy. So you have x y. So this is a triangle. Although it looks like inverse, but in the cover it is it is really a homomorphic triangle. Projected downstream it looks like this. So this is a term x, y, and uh, you also have polygon, uh, 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 this polygon contribution. So these are the leading order terms, but of course you have higher order terms. So, so for instance, you have this yellow, yellow polygon, very big one, to the higher order terms. So you have many higher order terms, uh, which we ignore, which we just write as higher order terms. We are not completing all of them. And then you notice that these relations indeed come from differential of a space-time superpotential. So this comes from differential of this. So this is indeed so called Jacobian algebra, uh, Jacobian of mean squared algebra. It is the differential uh, of this space time square potential. And it was computed by Smith in his paper. And uh, the leading order terms, not, not all the terms. And indeed, he is using, Smith is using uh, uh, the leading order terms, uh, whose corresponding category is just multi equivalent to that of T. So that's why he just care about the leading order terms. But here, uh, well, from our point of view, uh, we are using the whole, whole, whole space time super potential, and then we have a counter from the derived from high category to this uh, the, uh, derived category of the algebra, algebra, algebra. And then uh, the, the, so this is the sketch of proof. So you consider image of the WKB collections uh, under the counter, 
And indeed, in the homology level, they just transform to single modules. So this you have to compute. The, the, the image is not single, but after they get homology, it turns out that they are just single modules. And now, uh, you compute the dimension of both some space, and you just match. Using uh, Lagrangian sphere sign is easy, the dimension is very easy in both some space. But uh, on the uh, uh, Kruger side, it is a result of Taylor Young that uh, in the Boston, uh space of single module is two dimension and, and so on. And, and adjacent, adjacent module, uh, Boston between adjacent module are one dimension. So, so you can match the dimension. And once you match the dimension, because we, in general theory, the boundary is already objective, so you know that it is isomorphism on Boston space. And then, uh, and also it is result uh, in the previous side by Kelly Young that is generated by simple modules. So, so it, it, it gives a counter uh, that is subjective, and indeed uh, that it is isomorphism on the subcategory generated by the general spheres. So this uh, this counter is uh, the, the interesting that we are talking about. Uh, so this is uh, the end of my talk. Uh, so the conclusion is that uh, we can use the uh, 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 conversions uh, uh, to hook up interesting on our uh, uh, non and also uh, interesting counter realizing the motion of symmetry that would be useful in also in the ecosystem and so on. Okay, other questions? 